Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is June 14th, 2023 and lots of news for you today starting that Barcelona are expecting a final answer from Ilkay Gundogan in the upcoming two days. Also, the club have learned the price tags of Fabricio Diaz and Luzaro Girtruda. And finally, it looks like Serginho Des could end up staying in uh, Barcelona. So we have a lot of news to cover, so let's dive right in. Welcome, everybody, to the Barca News live stream, which is on every Mondays and Wednesdays at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I will cover a segment of news, then, we'll head back, then I'll head to the comment section or the chat section so we can get a discussion going and we can see what you guys are saying. Now, as always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way in helping this small and humble channel continue to grow so I can keep bringing you the most up-to-date Barcelona news. Now, let's start with three bits of news, very short three, uh, very short three bits of news that I've combined together because since they are short, it's not worth just covering one and then heading to the chat section. So put them all together. Let's cover all three of them together. Then we'll start with the chat section to see what you guys are saying. But let's start with the news that Jean Laporta has announced that he is willing once again to put money out of his own pocket in order to back the registration of the players. Now, Barcelona have gotten the feasibility plan approved, so they will be able to register the contracts of Gavi, Araujo, Marcos Alonso, Sergi Roberto, um, the contract renewal of Alejandro Valde as well. But just in case something bad happens and Barcelona find themselves in some precarious situation, then Jean Laporta is willing to put money from his own pocket and kind of to ensure the payment of the salary or to bond the payment of the salary of any of these players. Now, what that means exactly is, see, Barcelona, uh, Jan Laporta would be saying that Barcelona or guaranteeing La Liga that Barcelona would be willing to pay this, the salary of any of these players if they're not allowed to be registered. And if Barcelona end up not being able to pay for the salary, then it would come out straight from Jan Laporta's pocket. Now, this is not the first time Jan Laporta has offered to do this. He actually did this last summer. I don't know if you remember, but when Jules Kunde joined the club, Barcelona were unable to register his, his contract at first. And actually, he, he missed out on two weeks or two matches of La Liga. And Jean Laporta put money from his own pocket to guarantee the registration of Kunde, which in other words, if Barcelona had been unable to pay Kunde's salary for the entire season, then Jean Laporta would have had to pay it from his own pocket. Now, thankfully, it didn't come to that. Barcelona were able to pay Kunde's salary, but it seems that Jean Laporta is willing to do this once again. And again, it was thanks to Laporta that Jules Kunde was able to be registered and play the season. So it looks like Laporta is willing to do this once again this season, which just goes to show his full commitment to the club because, again, as a president, there's absolutely no requirement from him to do this. He's just something that he has offered because that's how much he is committed to the success of FC Barcelona. Now, speaking of FC Barcelona and Jean Laporta, the club have announced that they have extended the contract of the Barca Athletic coach, the Mexican legend, El Kaiser Rafa Marquez. Now, we've, uh, touched, we've touched a little bit about Rafa Marquez. You know, he, he he's had a pretty difficult season with Barca Athletic. Not a lot of talent, not a lot of money in that team, but nonetheless, he's been able to work miracles. He was able to take Barca Athletic all the way to the playoffs to qualify into the second division. Unfortunately, Barca Athletic lost 5-4 to four, uh, against Real Madrid in the semifinals, so they are going to be staying in the, third, um, in the third division. But nonetheless, Rafa Marquez has done a wonderful job this season, and the club have rewarded him with a contract extension for one more season until the summer of 2024. Now, speaking of Barca Athletic, one more news, and that is that Mikel Fey has officially passed his medical exams. So it's expected that he will be signing his official contract with Barcelona pretty soon. Now, I talked about Mikel Fey last live stream on Monday. He's an 18-year-old left-footed center back. He can play anywhere on that defensive line. Big, strong, very fast defender. He's very good in, with the air ball. He's still very good with his feet as well. He can combine really well. And he's one of those uh, kind of like, Old school defenders, if you may, where his no-nonsense defender goes all the way in. Very, very impressive guy. He was in the Croatian League. And then Barcelona signed him for 5 million euros with some variables. And he has officially passed the medical exams today in the city of Barcelona. 
So it's expected that Mikel Faye will be officially signing his contract with the club pretty soon. And of course, he will be a Barca Athletic signing. So we'll have to monitor his progression and see whether he'll be able to make that jump to the first team. So far from what I've seen, the few highlights that I've been able to see, he's very, very impressive. But again, you still have to prove yourself at Barcelona, no matter how impressive you are at other clubs. So that's the three bits of news that I had that I wanted to cover uh, combined together. Uh, so now let's head to the chat section. Let's see what you guys are saying. And next we are going to talk about Ilkay Gundogan because Barcelona are expecting an answer pretty soon from the German Turkish midfielder. All right, let's see. Some of you guys were already waiting for me. Chris, what's up, man? Roy, what's up? Chuchu's in the chat and he's actually on time. Hopefully you didn't bring that Nico nonsense with you again. <laughs> uh, let's see. Chuchu says, Dest staying is bad news. We'll talk about Dest. Uh, it's not for sure. So um, definitely keep watching. Chris says, uh, but at least we won't have to spend money. Um, uh, I guess you're talking about the right back position. Again, we'll talk about this in a little bit. Um, Tutu says, is Barca finance that bad? They might as well sell the club to Saudi million billionaires. Yes, the situation is bad. You know, I always highlight this. Um, every, every video, every live stream, I always talk about how bad the situation is. It is improving. It's much better than when Laporta first took over. Uh, but no, the club is not for sale. The club belongs to its members. It's one of the very few clubs in the entire world that's still owned by its own members. So there is no plan to sell the club. Laporta has made it very clear. That, that will never happen under his watch. I hope it never happens because the last thing we want is for Barcelona to be owned by one guy who has total control, and then we could, and then you know, could end up turning the club into a circus like PSG. That's the last thing we want. Um, let's see. Dark Knight, as always, in the chat section. What's up, Dark Knight? He says, "Hey, Mo, much love from Kansas City. Would you validate that Victor Roque has been signed?" Yes, Victor Roque. Hasn't been officially signed, but the agreement has been officially reached between Barcelona, the player, and his current club, Atletico Paranaense. Everything has been agreed to. There's an agreement in place, but the contract officially has not been signed because Barcelona first have to clear space on their wage bill. So they have to offload. They're talking about two, maybe three players. Once those players are offloaded and Barcelona have cleared some space on the wage bill, then that's con then that um, signing will be 100% official. For now, it's not, but there is an agreement. All parties are in agreement. Everything has been agreed to and negotiated. Everything's good to go. Just pending that Barcelona sell two or three players to be able to make the signing official. All right, let's talk about Ilkay Gundogan. Speaking of players arriving in the club, you know, we know his contract is expiring in a few days, June 30th. He's been uh, debating whether to come to Barcelona which he did give his verbal agreement to the club that he would join as long as Barcelona give him a long contract, um, which is talk, uh, which is um, the word is that Barcelona are offering him two seasons plus one, so a total of three seasons. Um, but Manchester City, of course, they're now pressuring to try to keep the player to renew his contract because Pep Guardiola does not want to lose Gundogan. You know, this season Gundogan has been absolutely phenomenal, probably the best, if not the second best player. On the entire squad, I would say the best, honestly. Um, he's been very key in the success of Manchester City. So Pep Guardiola really wants to keep him. And it looks like Gundogan's entourage reached out to Barcelona today through a virtual meeting. And they reached out to Barcelona because they wanted to ask the club about how things are going as far as the financial fair play rule restrictions and about Barcelona's ability to register the contract of Gundogan if he does end up signing for Barcelona. Now, Barcelona have communicated to Ilgay Gundogan's entourage that everything is fine. All the work has already been done as far as the signing of Gundogan, that there's plenty of space, uh, that there is enough space on the wage bill to register his contract. And uh, Gundogan's entourage has requested for assurances. This kind of sounds like what Messi was asking of the club. You know, he wanted guarantees in, in paper saying that they'd be able to register his contract if they sign them. It looks like Gundogan has asked for the same thing. But as opposed to Messi, Barcelona do have guarantees as far as registering the contract of, Un of Gundogan. And Barcelona told Gundogan's entourage that they will send over the guarantees in writing, all the paperwork that shows that Barcelona would be able to register the contract of Gundogan tonight. Of course, Spain is six hours ahead, so I'm guessing Barcelona already did that. 
If they did, we'll hear about it tomorrow. Barcelona are very confident that they will be able to finalize the signing of Gundogan, that they will be able to register him, of course, as long as the player agrees to come. But on Barcelona's end, everything's complete, everything's done, they're confident, they're positive, that everything's going to go their way. Now it's up to the player. It's The ball is, is in Gundogan's court, and it's reported that he will be making a final decision in the upcoming two days. Now, what we do know for sure because we don't know what, who Gundogan is going to choose, whether Barcelona or Manchester City. But what we do know for sure is that Gundogan has narrowed down his options to either Barca or Manchester City. So, there, you know, there's a lot of talks about PSG wanting to sign him, Arsenal wanting to sign him, the Saudis were offering him 100 million euros a season. All those options are at the window. The only two clubs that Gundogan is considering is either renewing with Manchester City or coming to Barcelona. And he will be making a final decision in the upcoming two days. And Barcelona so far are communicating that they feel pretty confident. But of course, in football, nothing is 100% for sure. So we are going to have to wait for Gundogan's official uh, decision. So let's head back to the chat section. Keep the discussion going. And then we'll talk about Fabricio Diaz since you guys always ask me about him. And since, you know, we are talking about midfielders. So let's head back to the chat section. Barry says, hi, Mo. What's up, Barry? Thank you for being on the live stream. Uh, I'm sorry if I mess up your name. I'll just call you by your last name. How about that? Colette says, why are we not offloading Garcia? He don't deserve to stay. Garcia will be offloaded as long as Barcelona receive a good offer for him. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, Van Bulay says, what's the news about Gundogan? I just finished talking about Gundogan. Uh... Let's see. Chuchu says, Mo, Faye is going to play preseason. He is an athletic signing. Xavi wants him to play preseason. Uh, Faye is officially a Barca athletic signing. He might train with the first team. He might play some games with the first team. But officially speaking, he is a Barca athletic signing. You know, Just like Julian Araujo, just like Pablo Torre. Uh, they're all Barca athletic signings. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Anthony says, hello, good sir. What's up, Anthony? Uh, Ikucho says he has, he's going to play preseason. He would be a Barcelonic player. I would play with the first team dynamics like Marc Casado. Exactly. Um, all right. One more and then we'll talk about Fabricio Diaz. Since, again, you guys always ask me about him. Dark Knight says, to be honest, Dest was not a terrible player. I just felt Xavi wasn't a fan. Torres is a definition of terrible. Do you agree? I think they're both terrible. But we'll talk about Dest in a little bit. Uh, but let's get back. To the news, and let's talk about Fabricio Diaz because Barcelona have officially learned the price tag of the Uruguayan midfielder. And of course, his price tag, as expected, has increased. Now, Barcelona have been tracking, <clears throat> excuse me, Barcelona have been tracking Fabricio Diaz for quite some time. He's, you know, 20 years old, pivot, very strong pivot, solid defensively, really good vision of the field. He plays for the, for the Uruguayan team, Liverpool de Montevideo. Barcelona were trying to sign him for quite some time. The negotiations hit a stall because uh, Liverpool and Montevideo decided to up the price. And then, of course, the player did leave to the under-20 World Cup with his national team of Uruguay. And he, So during that whole month of that World Cup, obviously there was no contact between Barcelona and the player because the player was completely focused on the international tournament. And while Uruguay has officially won the under-20 World Cup, they're world champions. And as a result, Fabricio Diaz, the captain of that team, one of the main reasons for the success of that team, his price tag has now went up. Now, his price tag was around 5, 6 million euros before the World Cup. His official price tag now has gone up to 8 million euros, which, of course, makes things for Barcelona a bit more difficult because the club is very strapped on cash. And then they were already struggling of being able to pay those five, six million euros. So now the eight millions are going to be that much more difficult. But nonetheless, Barcelona are still interested. They're still seeing, studying ways of how they can sign them. The problem is that every time Barcelona think that they have prepared a good offer to Liverpool Montevideo, some Premier League club comes and puts more money on the table. And then Barcelona have to go back to the drawing board to figure out where they can pull cash from to make the offer even better. So that's the problem right now that a lot of teams are interested in him and Barcelona have to compete with all these teams. But nonetheless, Barcelona's interest is real. 
They're studying the situation. They're figuring out ways how to pull cash together because they really want to sign him. They think he's a good bet for the future. Someone who can definitely be a starter, uh, a pivot starter for Barcelona. Not perhaps this season because, you know, he, he will still be have to make that jump to Europe. He used to the Barca style of play, you know, mature a little bit more as far as his play play style. But nonetheless, it is a, a, a future bet that Barcelona want to make. But for now, they have to figure out how to pay it for it. I, of course, am of the opinion that Barcelona should 100% invest in the signing. Fabricio Diaz is very promising pivot. And these are the kind of signings that Barcelona need to make. You know, young players with a, with, a, with a lot of projection, with a lot of promise, and who, at the end of the day, they don't cost much. Yes, 8 million euros for Barcelona is a lot of money right now because they're broke. But nonetheless, 8 million euros, when you talk about as far as the market, that's nothing, right? And these are the kind of signings you want to make. Because even if they don't work out, it's okay. You only spend 8 million euros versus like Bartomeu, who would spend 130 on Griezmann, and now he doesn't work out, and now you're out, uh, now you're out 130 million euros. You know, It's different to lose 8 million euros on a failed signing versus losing 100 million euros on a failed signing. So these are the kind of signings that Barcelona need to be making. So I really hope they do it. Hopefully Barcelona can pull the cash for, for this deal. And hopefully they can wrap it up as soon as possible. So let's head back to the chat section. Wow, we have 112 people watching. This is the first time in Barca News' history that, that it's been triple-digit viewers that are watching live. It's an amazing moment. Let's hit that like button, guys. There's only 26 likes. Let's make it 100 likes. Let's keep the momentum going. This channel has been um, growing a lot these past few weeks. And, man, it's just insane. I can't believe it. Uh, it's all thanks to you amazing people who are always here watching the videos, leaving your comments, hitting the like button. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And let's keep the momentum going. Let's keep growing. And also let's head to the chat section so we can get a few more comments in. And then we'll talk about Luzaro Hirtruda. I've been practicing that name all day, guys, because I do not speak Dutch. And I think that's how you, you say it. If there's anyone who speaks Dutch in the, in the, in the chat section, please let me know if, how bad I'm butchering the name. Okay, uh, let's see. Sintu says, do you want more a defensive pivot or a technical pivot? Technical pivot because Barcelona's pivot has to be technical. And Fabricio Diaz, he's very defensive, but he also has technical qualities. Um, you know, unlike players like Amrabat, let's say, or Kessi, who are much more defensive than they are technical. That's why I would like the signing of Fabricio Diaz. Uh, let's see. Um, well, what else? What else? Where did we leave off? Uh, Sheriff says, Mo Gundogan. Is Gundogan come to Barcelona? I just talked about Gundogan. If you missed it, make sure to watch the live stream once it ends. Uh, Abbas says, why do goalkeepers wear a different kit? <laughs> Instead of wearing the same kit. Honestly, I don't know. It has to do, I, I know. I think it has to do something with um, to avoid confusion. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's why. Uh, that way, you know. There's no confusion between the defenders and their own goalkeeper. There's also no confusion for the referee. You know, some a guy wearing the same uniform as everyone else gap, grabs the ball by the hand and he's like, oh, red card, handball. Oh, no, wait, you're the goalkeeper. Sorry, never mind. I think that's why I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, um, let's see. Bisca Barca. Yes, Bisca Barca. Triple digits. Let's go. Okay, uh, Claudia says, I heard Deco choose Paulinho from Fulham and Benfica player over Amrabat. Paulinho cost 50 and Fulham are ready to swap players. Um, as far as I know, there's no confirmation of that. But uh, I don't know where you heard it. But as far as my information, no. Okay. Let's get back to the news because the next news is about Luzaro Hirtruda. I've talked about this guy before in previous videos. He's a 22-year-old right back. Currently plays in the Dutch league team. Feyenoord. He's had an excellent season. He's one of the main reasons why his current team, Feyenoord, won the, the, uh, the Dutch league. And Barcelona have officially learned his price tag. And he has a price tag of 18 million euros. So he's definitely a real possibility for Barcelona. Now, as far as the right back position, and I touched about the, uh, on this a little bit yesterday. But, and in previous videos as well. But Barcelona's main priorities for this summer transfer market is obviously number one is the pivot position which just talks about Amrabat, maybe other options. We'll see. There's the interior, which, of course, Gundogan, hopefully he's going to be filling that position. There's Inigo Martinez, who the sign is pretty much complete. And finally, Vitor Roque, which 
the agreement has been reached. Those are the priorities of Barcelona for this summer transfer market. Once those priorities are met, if Barcelona still have some extra cash, if they have more space on, uh, on the wage bill, then they'll sign a right back. If not, then the right back position is not a priority until the next summer. Barcelona don't want to make a big investment on the right back position. They're waiting for the next season to do that. And Deco has already offered the club the option of Vanderson, which I mentioned in yesterday's video. So if Barcelona can get a good, someone good for the right back position and they have extra cash for him, they have space on the wage bill, they'll do it. If not, they're okay going with that one, using Julian Araujo, maybe have Kunde rotate with him and then wait until next summer and try to sign Vanderson or someone else. Now, Luzaro Gertruda, definitely an option for Barcelona. There's also other options. There's Cancelo on loan. And there's, of course, the option of Ivan Fresneda, which I mentioned in Monday's live stream. He's the right back for Real Valladolid, who just got relegated to the second division. But it seems that Ivan Fresneda is much closer to joining Dortmund than to coming to Barcelona. So that option might be off the table. So the other options, the, the remaining options are, of course, Cancelo on loan. And there is Luzaro Gertruda, who Barcelona have learned that his price is 18 million euros. Again, if Barcelona meet their priorities, they have cash, they have cash left, they have space on the wage bill, they'll sign him. If not, they'll wait until the next season. So let's get back to the comment section. We'll do two, three comments real quick, and then we'll talk about Serginho Des since we are on the topic of right backs. And then finally, there's news about Inio Martinez. There's some news about Carrasco, and there's some news about Kimmich, and then we'll wrap it up. Lots of news today, but when there's a lot of news, it's a good day because it keeps me busy, and I have things to report to you guys. All right, let's see. Uh, Dark Knight says, Subi and Kimmich ain't coming. Why can't we just focus on realistic Amrabat before we lose him? Um, I think because Xabi is insisting that Barcelona, you know, make that, make the offer for for uh, Subimendi, just to see maybe it works, maybe not. You know, Subimendi is his favorite option. But if not, of course, Amrabat is right there. Um, you know, Xabi likes Amrabat. He thinks he's a good option for Barcelona. But, of course, he does have players that he prefers over Amrabat. Okay, a best thing says, do you think Vitor Roque is worth 40 mil? Absolutely. In today's market, that's actually a huge bargain. Barcelona, uh, I'm sorry, Real Madrid paid 60 million for Endrik. Someone who's two years younger than Vitor Roque, who's going to take another two years to come to Europe versus Vitor Roque is already 18, so he can already come to Europe this season. And Endrik has completely disappeared off the map. He he was the, the next big thing out of Brazil. He was one of the most promising talents in the world. And all of a sudden, he's not playing, he's not starting, he's not scoring, nothing. And Real Madrid paid $60 million for him so they can wait two more years for someone who's already flopping. Meanwhile, Vitor Roque... 40 million euros for someone who's 18, who's ready to come, who's already proved himself on the international stage. You know, he won the South American Championship with Brazil. He was the top scorer of that um, of that tournament. Uh, one of the main reasons why Brazil won it. Absolutely worth 40 mil, especially in today's market where teams seem to want to pay, you know, 100 mil for the water boy, 200 mil for the guy who brings you the towels. I mean, the market is insane. So 40 mil, absolute bargain. Okay, let's see. What else? Yanel Garcia says, Mo, what your favorite jersey kit for Barcelona? Are we talking about this season? Are we talking about next season? Are we talking about in history? Um, let me know and I'll answer that question. Carlos Lopez says, I don't know too much about Roque, but Alvarez has huge potential going away. Set City, hate to see it. Yes, absolutely. I think Alvarez did, uh, Julian Alvarez made a big mistake renewing his con, extending his contract with Manchester City until 2028. You know, he has a lot of potential. He's never going to be the starter at Manchester City unless Haaland leaves, which there is talks about Haaland maybe leaving if Pep Guardiola leaves. You know, Pep Guardiola has decided, uh, has, is not renewing his contract so far with Manchester City. It expires at the end of next season. And there is talks that if Pep Guardiola does leave in the summer of 2024, that Haaland could follow. But either way, I think Julian Alvarez wasting his talent there, you know, being the substitute of Haaland. He's never going to be the starter over Haaland unless Haaland breaks his leg. Or ends up leaving. But of course, there's no point of talking about Julian Alvarez regardless. Because there's no way we can afford his transfer fee. No way we can afford his salary. So, that's it. Alright, let's talk about Serginho Des because... 
the American fullback could end up staying at Barcelona. Now, there's a lot of interest in Serginho Des. There's been a lot of clubs who have reached out to Barcelona. You know, clubs like Union Berlin. There were, there were talks about some clubs in the MLS wanting to sign him. Some clubs even in Italy. But aside from the interest, aside from the phone calls, there haven't been any concrete offers. Just plenty of, uh, of interested clubs, plenty of questions, but no official offers. And Barcelona are, are con contemplating an option B. The option B would be if Barcelona cannot offload Sergio Dest, would be to keep him. And maybe he could be that player who can rotate, uh, maybe with someone like Julian Araujo, maybe with, with Jules Kunde. But keeping him as an option B, as an alternative, kind of like just to fill that spot until next season when they can offload him. But again, that's just the option B. The main goal of Barcelona is still to offload Sergio Dest this summer because Xavi Hernandez does not count on the player. He's not impressed with the player at all. He had a really bad loan spell at AC Milan. And unfortunately, so far, the offers have not materialized. Hopefully, a club can take him because then his offloading him will be huge for the club as far as reducing the wage bill as far as clearing more space for new incomings. But for now, no official offers. And Barcelona could consider keeping him if that is the case until the end of the transfer market. Now, Serginho Des, someone mentioned Dark Knight, said, is he terrible? I think so. I don't think it's a Xavi Hernandez problem. Even before Xavi Hernandez, when we saw Des under Kuman, under Valverde, under Setien, he was very erratic. You know, he was all over the place. He would have really good moments and then really bad ones. He would make some really bad mistakes in the defense, uh, really bad mistakes in the offense as well. And then, you know, if he hasn't worked out at Barcelona, he hasn't worked out in AC Milan, he's getting less and less play with the US, uh, with the, uh, with the US men's national team. That tells you something. It's obviously not a Xavi thing because Xavi doesn't coach AC Milan. Xavi doesn't coach the US men's national team. And he's not getting minutes with any of those teams. So it's obviously a, perform it's a performance thing. It's unfortunate because Sergio Des had a lot of promise. It looked like, you know, he was really going to be up there. But then he somehow just plateaued and got stuck. Very unfortunate. Maybe he can find his way back in another team. But at Barcelona, they're not counting on him. They want to offload him. Unless, of course, no offers materialize, then he can be an option for the right back position until next season when Barcelona can sign someone on a long-term basis. All right, let's talk. Let's head back to the comment section and then we'll talk about Inigo Martinez, also Carrasco, and Kimmich. And then uh, we'll wrap it up. Wow, we're already almost at 30 minutes. Lots of news today. I'm telling you, Barcelona keeps me busy. All right, let's see. Where did we leave off? Abbas says, Do you think Mbappe will come to Real Madrid this time around? Uh, honestly, I, I'm not sure because obviously Madrid were very interested in Mbappe. They tried to sign him. And there is talks about Florentino Perez now not wanting to do anything with Mbappe because what he did, you know, everything was agreed to. Mbappe was like one step away from signing for Real Madrid last season. And then all of a sudden he makes a U-turn and says, never mind, I'm staying at PSG. So there is talks about Florentino Perez being very upset with the player about what he did and that he doesn't want anything to know about him. But at the end of the day, he's still Mbappe. So no matter how upset you are at him, I think eventually signing him could be good for them. So they, may, they might, they might, but... Regardless, I don't care. This is the Barca channel, and we only care about the best Barcelona. All right. Let's see. Who would you rather sell, Ferran or Fati? Fati, 100. Uh, I'm sorry, Ferran, 100%, because he um, he just sucks, man. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Abbas says, any news on Barca B promotion? Uh, I already mentioned, I already talked about it earlier in the video, talked about it in previous videos as well. No promotion. They lost against Real Madrid in a semifinal. So they're going to be staying in the third division. All right, let's talk about Car... Uh, no, sorry, Inigo Martinez, then we'll talk about Carrasco. Inigo Martinez, he obviously has everything in place. All the agreements are in place with Barcelona. He's a for-sure signing. Once the market opens in Barcelona, we'll make the signing official. The problem is that today he underwent surgery in the city of Barcelona on his calf. Now, Barcelona are saying it's nothing serious. It's a small surgery. Apparently, he had been having pain issues with his calf since the end of last season. Not this season. Last season. So, he's had this injury for quite some time. He underwent the surgery. 
He's only going to be out for 15 days, which means he'll got, he's going to be ready by the end of June. So it's not going to affect his signing because he'll be ready before even the preseason begins because the preseason begins on July 10th. My only worry about, I do like Inyo Martinez as a center back. He's a very strong, solid center back, very experienced. Kind of reminds me a little bit, again, old school defenders. Very Goes all the way in, fully committed. Very strong defend, defender. The only problem is he's had a lot of injuries in the past two to three seasons. He's already undergoing surgery, and he hasn't even officially signed his contract. That worries me a little bit. Barcelona saying it's not a big deal, that everything's fine. So I got to trust their judgment, but it does worry me a little bit. Now, speaking of teams that wear red, because Athletic Club de Bilbao do wear red, and so does Atletico de Madrid. And the news is, ladies and gentlemen, is that Carrasco has decided to not fully close the door, but very close to closing the door to Barcelona. Now, we all know, and I've talked about this many times, when Barcelona offloaded Depay to Atletico Madrid, they negotiated an option in his contract that would allow Barcelona to sign Carrasco during this summer. Atletico de Madrid for around 19 million euros. Now, Xabi would like to have Carrasco on his team. It's not like he's crazy about him. It is a good option for Xabi. So Barcelona attempted to negotiate down that 19 million euros down to nine, eight, because they don't think Carrasco is really worth that much. Plus, he only has one year left on his contract. Atletico Madrid said absolutely not. If you want to buy him, it's 19 million euros or don't. After that, the situation kind of the operation completely came to a halt. Barcelona not willing to pay for that much. Plus, Carrasco is not really a priority. Again, the priority is the pivot. Gundogan, Inigo, Pito Roque. So the operation has been on hold for quite some time. There's no communication. Everything has cooled off. And today, Carrasco made some interesting statements, which seems like he is closing the door on Barcelona. Maybe not fully. I would say maybe 90%. So what did Carrasco say? He said, at the moment, I see myself doing the preseason at Atletico, where I am very happy, but you never know what can happen in football. If offers arrive, we will discuss it with the club. I don't want to talk about it too much. I still have a year on my contract at Atletico, and I am concentrating on the games with Belgium and then on vacation. Then it will be the time to think about a transfer, a contract extension, or the completion of my last year of contract in Madrid. So, not fully closing the door, but he's saying that he's happy at Atletico Madrid, that he's focused on Atletico Madrid, that he, you know, wants to either complete his contract, extend it, or maybe talk about transfer. But for now, it looks like he is closing the door a little bit. I'm happy about it. I don't think Carrasco is, you know, it's Barca material. He's better than the options that we have right now, but not necessary i think he's more of a ferran torres kind of signing where you know he's might give you some good moments but overall he's not that guy who's gonna come change things around elevate the level of barcelona make him more competitive on the european stage he's not that guy anyways last news and then we'll do the comment section because this last bit of news is very very short and it's about joshua kimmich i mentioned in yesterday's video that joshua kimmich officially closed the door on barcelona Said he wants to stay in Bayern Munich. He still has two years on his contract. Blah blah blah. You know, I've never, I never for once thought that the, the Joshua Kimmich option was was remotely possible. And yesterday he confirmed it. And well, today we found out that when Barcelona heard about the rumors that Joshua Kimmich might want to leave Bayern Munich, they reached out to the Bundesliga club. And as I've been saying in previous videos, Bayern Munich have no interest in offloading Kimmich. And their interest in us in Alfa and Kimmich is so non-existent that Bayern Munich didn't even respond to Barcelona's requests for communication or letters or phone calls. They didn't even pick up the phone and say, hey, we're not interested. They didn't even answer at all. That's how very little interested they were in offloading him. thought it was an interesting, um, interesting news to share with you because, again, I've been saying from day one, it's not possible. Bayern Munich do not want to offload him.
But then there was plenty of reporters saying, oh, Joshua Kimmich, he's ready to push his way out of Bayern Munich. Oh, Joshua Kimmich is coming to Barcelona. Oh, Joshua Kimmich already signed. He's actually playing. Look at look on your TV. I always said it's not possible. And, well, he confirmed it yesterday, and this further confirms it, that Bayern Munich never had any intention of offloading him. They weren't even willing to pick up the phone and say, sorry, guys, nothing. They completely ignored it. Okay. Let's see, guys. That's all the news for today. So we still have a few more minutes. We'll do more comments. We'll get the discussion going. Then we'll wrap it up. Lots of news today. I got through it. I can't believe we hit 130 some viewers. That's amazing. But it's still 53 likes. That's almost a third. So let's hit that like button, guys. Let's help this channel continue to grow. Let's keep the momentum going. And let's go back to that chat section. All right. Where did we leave off? Sally says Carrasco is a waste of money. I agree. So that's why I'm glad that he made those statements. Hopefully Barcelona, you know, don't end up signing him. Abbas says, please smash the like button. Yes, Abbas, thank you. Uh, Cule Caribeño. All right. What part of the Caribe, uh, Caribe are you from? Carrasco is only arriving to Barca if Ferran leaves and that isn't happening. Ferran is leaving. He's saying no right now, but Barcelona will find a way. They don't want him to stay at the club. You know, out of Ferran, que si, Fati, if there's one player that Barcelona might back away and say, okay, fine, we're going to keep you, is Fati. As far as Ferran and Cassi, the decision is 100%. They're leaving. There's no chance that they're going to stay. No way for Barcelona to change their mind unless something extremely drastic happens. Uh, I don't know, a meteor falls and destroys the camp now, and now we have to keep our players. Something crazy. Okay, Sintu says Carrasco is way better than Torres. He might be better, but they're still both garbage. Um, you know, uh, a rotten apple is still better than no apple. Doesn't mean I want to eat it. All right, let's see. Isaac says, so I heard PSG will come for Griezmann and Mbappe leave. I don't care what PSG do. I mean, they can sign the entire world. They're still not going to win a Champions League. That place, that club is a joke. How much longer would you give Fatih before considering a sale? Uh, I would consider a sale now, honestly. Uh, I like Fatih a lot. I had a lot of hopes in him. I mean, Fatih was destined to be probably one of the best La Masia graduates since Leo Messi. But unfortunately, his injuries, he's had multiple surgeries on the same knee. And sometimes, you know, these things you just cannot recover from. So it's not a talent issue. It's not a skill issue. Fatih is a monster. He has all the raw talent of the world. He's the kind of player that only comes, you know, once in a generation, maybe twice in a generation. But unfortunately, you know, and we've seen this story before with, with Ronaldo, the real Ronaldo, not uh, not CR7, not Penaldo. The real Ronaldo, you know, we saw what happened with his knee, and he was one of the most skilled, if not the most skilled number nine ever. So, unfortunately, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, even with the goals that Fatih has scored, he was mostly a ghost on uh, on the field, you know, a shell of what he used to be. So given the club's financial situation, I would offload him now. We need to get rid of his salary. It's 10 million euros. It doesn't make sense to pay 10 million euros for someone who's on the bench. And, you know, selling him, if we can get 60, 70 million euros now, that's huge for the club versus, you know, waiting another season. He ends up not recovering his form and then his value diminishes even more. If the club situation was fine, I'd be like, give him another season or send him on loan. But given the club situation, I think now we should sell him now. Uh, okay. Kule Caribeño says, Kimmich won't sign with Barca. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. Anthony says, who would you keep? Kessie or Ferran must choose one. If I absolutely have to, Kessie, that's not hard. Um, I like Kessie, you know, but unfortunately we have to offload players. And if you have to choose one, it's Frank Kessie. Let's see. Um, let's see what else. Lukma says, I don't think anyone will be ready to be over six uh, to pay over 60. Uh, there is talks about some clubs interested in paying that. Plus, in this today's market, like I said, I mean, these clubs are spending crazy amounts of money. So 60 million euros in this climate is nothing. I mean, that's what clubs, again, they're paying 100 million euros for the water boy um so for a player why not brad says what's up brad good to have you in the chat section would you sell fatty for 40 i think he's worth around 60 
Uh, I wouldn't sell him for 40. No, I think anything above 50, 60, 70, 80, not even 50. I think 60, I'd go, I'd go the lowest. But no, 40 is too low, even though it would be 100% profits for the club. Okay, let's see. Nima, what's up, Nima? You're late, man. The stream is over. But it's okay. It's good to have you, even if it's for a few seconds. Um, all right. Guys, that's it. We got through all the news. We had a good discussion going. Isaac says, I have a feeling Pique will come as president with Guardiola as his coach. I mean, if that happens, that'd be cool. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for those who will be watching once it's over. I will see you in tomorrow's video. I'm sure it's going to be another hectic day. You know, as the, the closer we get to the summer transfer market opening, the crazier it's going to get. And I love it because I love Barcelona and I love sharing everything that, that comes uh, that's pertaining to Barcelona with you guys because you guys are amazing. Thank you again for everything. Have a good night or good morning wherever you are in the world. As always, Bisca Barça.